my GrantStream UCM 6302 project. So let's start with the scope of work. I have a client that he wants to basically give all the same features and functionality he used to provide via his phone system to his users that are currently now working remotely. The whole system inside his office is based on a UCM 6510. So he did say that he did have a few requirements and one was that it be safe, quick, reversible, and cost effective. All right, based on his criteria, I was able to come up with one solution, and that is to use the new GrantStream 6302, which is part of the 6300 series of IPPVXs, and leverage, take full advantage of the Remote Connect service to extend the client's current phone infrastructure. And when I say extend the current phone infrastructure, I'll, I'm not doing anything more than just allowing the, the those remote employees access to make calls but not from their home phones or a personal cell phone or a corporate cell phone I allow them to make phone calls through the office in other words is when they return a call or they do from another office or a warehouse they do an inner office extension dialing they don't have nobody has to do anything it is basically the calls just get directed to them at their current location regardless if it's inside an office or working remotely so why this solution easily the client explicitly said he wants it to be re reversible he doesn't want to rip out what he currently has and put in a new phone system at the same time he doesn't want to punch holes in his firewall just to accommodate a few remote extensions In addition to why I chose this solution, he did say he wants it to be quick. Only took about an hour to set up and test. He wanted it to be cost effective. The MSRP is 649, so if you're into phone systems and you already have a distributor, you know you're not going to be paying that price. It's reversible. I just simply unplug it and undo a few little changes. Less than 10 minutes worth of work. At the same time, it is safe. A lot safer than punching holes in the firewall. It's very easy to use the UCM's connection to the remote connect and have GrandStream maintain that stun server out there on the internet, do all the natural traversal back into the office. Overall, it's a much quicker and simpler solution. It's a small device. I wanted to explain why I picked the 6302 versus the, 60, the 6301. Um, they're almost the same, just the 6302 seemed to be a little bit more um, robust of a, of a hardware device. And it was easy to sell it to the client basically saying, look, this can be a backup or this can be the next phone system for a new office or a smaller office or any changes in the future. Because it's the next generation at the same time is we're taking more advantage uh, SIP trunks in this office he currently has a PRI solution which is very very cost effective but in the future if he does move he might not have that PRI provider nearby so it's a it's a little bit of a future proofing a little bit more of an upsell had more pluses than negatives and the cost difference between the 6301 and the 6302 was more or less negligible when I pitched it to the client. So that's why I chose the 6302 overall for this project. The plan, set up the UCM as if it was at a sister site via a peer SIP trunk connection. And we're only going to set up a few pieces of the UCM 6302 as we're only going to provide a limited functionality to the remote users. Most of the hardcore things that the UCM 6510 that's currently in the office is doing, it will continue to do. 
So all the voicemail, all that stuff is going to be still handled by the 6510. We're just going to use the 6302 to provide remote extensions. So what we first need to do is after we unbox the 6302 and we set it up, we need to do the basic configuration, set the date and time, the network, email, and we're only going to use the email in case we ever forget the password and we need to reset the password. If you can just hit the button to reset the whole device, then you don't need to set up the email piece either. But you also want to change the admin password standard good security practices. Then we're going to register the UCM 6302 with GDMS and we're going to make sure that our remote connection is also registered in GDMS. Once we have that set up, now we look at the peer trunk. So we're going to create a SIP trunk between the two UCMs and we'll also need to share the UCM 6510's LDAP phone book. That way, if someone is using the remote extension and they need to call someone via extension dialing and they don't remember the person's four-digit extension, they can just look it up in the UCM 6302's WebRTC basic phone book. So we're good on that. So there's a few things we need to keep in mind when we're setting up the 6302. First we need to use a different range of extensions. We don't want a conflict between different extension dialings. So we need to make sure that they don't have the same range. Another, we need to configure an inbound route that allows connections from the 6302 from the 6510. You also need to do the same in the reverse order allow inbound connections to the 6510 from the 6302. Now you must note this whole project, one of the main things that you need to keep in mind, E911 service is not provided. Well, in the previous slide, we showed which inbound routes we need. Now we need to configure our outbound routes. So you'll need to configure an outbound route for on the UCM 6510 to the 6302 for its extension dialing. You also need to configure an outbound route on the 6302 to the 6510 to also allow extension dialing. Then you'll need to configure an outbound route on the 6302 to the 6510 for outbound calls via the PRI. Then you'll also need to enable WebRTC support on the UCM 6302. I did this a few times. I don't know if the default setting is enabled on, but check that setting. Once again, I have to repeat, E911 service is not provided. Okay, now let's look at the actual extensions. I always believe it's better to ask for the resource then versus just give everyone access to, to a resource. So with that being said, I require that remote users must request access to use the remote feature. So if there's somebody out there that isn't going to use it, they're not going to bother contacting me, so I don't have to worry about them. But those that do contact me, then I can provide the correct support as well as give them all the service and attention they'll need. It's very quick setup. so. It's, it's not a difficult process. Another thing you want to do at the extension level, now you'll need to enable each active user on the UCM65 extension to ring simultaneous to the user's extension on the 6302. In the example I show here, let's say that your extension on the 6510 is 1001. And on the 6302, that same person's remote extension is extension 4001. Well, you're going to hit this ring simultaneous. You're going to enable it. And you see where it says external number? When I first read it, I thought it meant external, such as pick up the PRI, call out. No, it probably refers to any other number that's not that extension number. 
So I put in the extension for this user uh, that relates to them on the 6302, which was extension 4001. Well, that's pretty much it. So let's go through an actual real-time demo, and I'll show you how it works. All right, guys, let's do this demo. If you followed all the steps that I told you to do, the bullet points in the, the presentation, it should work. I like mapping everything out on paper first. Then I go in and I do the, the process, and I'm able to fill in the blanks where I see things are broken before I present. So we're going to do a demo of the final solution. So if everything that we wrote out is configured, then this should work. So we're going to go and we're going to go to Grandstream's the gdms.cloud address that Grandstream provides us through the Remote Connect service. If everything's working, then we should be redirected and added directly to our Grandstream UCM, the 6302, their WebRTC interface what I do love about WebRTC is it works across the board on all devices you only need to know the URL a username and a password no installing software no maintaining software everything's done through this interface so we're gonna log in now Let me put the pat the the extension and I am gonna enter the complex password that the system generated and we're gonna log in now if everything works as planned we should be presented and we are with all the contacts from our 6510 why because we enabled the LDAP syncing so there's everyone's information I'm sorry I have to black everything out for privacy issues and confidentiality as well as here we can now see there's everything we would expect to see we see our recent calls which is our call history then we can do meetings what's nice is this is not just a conference bridge this is also if you want to use the UCM's video conferencing features to have your to host your own private internal meetings and this is what we wanted the 60 302's WebRTC dialer. Now, yes, there you could create a, an outside remote extension using the phone. In fact, if you know how to punch a hole in your firewall and do all that, this makes it even easier. You can set up a phone. You can set up the Wave app on your regular phone. I did find a few issues between the way they operate between the the version I had on an iPhone and the version I had on an Android phone. That's why I prefer going the WebRTC client. It's just seamless. Everybody gets the same experience, not n nothing notable. So let's go ahead and make an outside phone call. I'm going to call a phone number of time and weather here in Miami that all seasoned. Oh, I'm sorry. That all seasoned. That all seasoned telephone people know. This is how we test our connections. So it should. See, so it seems to be working. And it should automatically hang up when the call's been disconnected. It works. So I'm glad it was that simple. And believe it or not, this is something you can do for your clients and you can make some money on the side. If your client is new to phone systems, like they don't have one or they have an old KSU unit and you're swapping it out, I can't complain. Grandstream makes really good, reliable, easy to configure and maintain products. So my hats to them. Again, this is not endorsed. This configuration falls way out of their user specs. They don't promote it. That's it. Thank you for watching. That concludes today's unboxing. 
If you enjoyed this video, please share it with one of your friends. That way you can help spread the word. If you haven't done so, please go ahead and smash that like button below. It really does help the YouTube algorithm. As well as subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so that you're notified the next time I post a video. Until then, take care and bye-bye.